Express Media would like to acknowledge that this event is broadcast from the stolen lands of the Wurundjeri and Bunurong peoples of the Kulin Nation. We also pay our respects to the traditional custodians of all the lands from which our readers are presenting in this broadcast. We acknowledge the lands which this broadcast reach and acknowledge First Nations people as the traditional custodians of this country, whose cultures are among the oldest living cultures in human history. We pay respects to, to the elders of these communities, past and present. We recognise that sovereignty was never ceded and that colonisation is an ongoing process. It was, is and always will be Aboriginal land. Hello, I'm Adalia and I am the editor of VoiceWorks. I am really excited to present you with VoiceWorks issue 121, Themed Root. In this issue, we asked all of our contributors um, what kind of plant they would be, which is one of those kind of road trip questions that uh, seems really silly. But I was actually really moved by the like intimate little details in the descriptions. So in my increasingly strained battle to distract from my own face in these launches, um, I will now play a PowerPoint presentation I prepared earlier, um, as well as some footage from the office. I remember when I first joined Edcom that each issue of VoiceWorks I worked on seemed so much better than the last. I know this was just recency bias, but I still fall for it every time. I still catch myself handing it to my friends like, this is the best VoiceWorks ever. Express Media have been able to return to our offices in recent weeks, and it has been really amazing to go through all our old issues, many of which are older than I am. Reading them, holding them, I can feel how special each issue is, what that initial pride and excitement the writers and editors who worked on it must have felt like when it was hot off the press. There is probably a different best issue for everybody who's ever worked with VoiceWorks, who's ever read it. Much of the writing VoiceWorks publishes deals with heavy themes, grief, discrimination, illness. I don't know the exact relationships that these writers have to their material and their pieces, but I know what I am reading is specific to them. I see it in the movie maker presentation in Sophia Casanova's Mulberry Hands, the mini trampoline in Coco Huang's This Place and Us, and the Tulsi in Sandra Kalarakul's 13 Ways of Looking at the Sea. I see it in how Sarah Fegan's root rot is laid out like a medical questionnaire, Lucy Robbins' notes on solidity is laid out like a list, and Neve Schofield's lineage incorporates online reviews. I see it in the eyes in T-Dog Extreme's Donut Blood, in what is referenced in Naomi Segal's Companions, and what is missing from Celeste Stein's Falling. I want to thank all of our contributors for sharing their work with these intimacies and specificities that are all their own. I would also like to thank Claire Wigney for her work on Ruth's stunning cover, how the digital bitmap rubs beautifully against her brushstrokes. I'd like to thank Joyce Chang for her illustrations, which capture not only the imagery, but somehow the physical texture of each piece she worked on. I would like to thank our incredible designer, Selena Rapinus, who blows me away every time. I would like to thank our, incred and our incredible editorial committee, whose thoughtfulness and kindness and patience with me as our process has changed is always really, um, shouldn't be surprising, but somehow it is. I would like to thank my colleagues at Express Media, who you are about to get to meet throughout the launch, starting with Jess. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Jess Layton, <laughs> and I am the administration and marketing coordinator here at Express Media and VoiceWorks. I'm the one who handles all of the invoicing, all of the sending out of VoiceWorks issues to people, all that good admin stuff that no one else wants to do. <laughs> First up, we have Sophia Casanova with an incredible story about family and siblings and grief called Mulberry Hands. <laughs> so Sophia Casanova is 24 years old. She is a Vietnamese Australian writer with a love of ghost stories and romance novels. She tweets about TV shows, good and bad, from Sophia Casanova on Twitter. Be sure to follow her. Now, here's Mulberry Hands. This story is called Mulberry Hands. I'm standing in my underwear on Chestnut Street. The morning of Lunar New Year is sticky like mango left in the sun, ushered in with a herald of cicadas. The jacaranda tree behind me, over six metres tall, arches over with its purple blossoms and whispers, Good morning. It's the year of the rat, strong and prosperous. My bones feel brittle in their meat pockets. I've been sapped of my essence. I head home barefoot on asphalt. I slip in through the side door past the laundry. Sweaty clothes have piled up in our baskets. 
our clothesline is empty. I tiptoe in as orange sunlight touches the dusty surfaces of our home. We've been simmering in the darkness, wishing we could shed our heavy bodies since October. But something is different. An absence of sound. My mother is waking up without crying for the first time. She emerges from the bedroom down the hall, her hair in a low bun, her hands holding a rainbow of cash. I stand and watch as she searches through the cupboards for the red pockets she opened last year, slipping a colour gently in each and setting them aside in neat piles. Gong chuk nam mei, she says quietly to me as I walk to her. She reaches for my face and deeply sniffs my head. I wrap my arms around her, a part of me hoping she'll hold me there but she releases me instead with a wistful smile and I find semi-clean clothes to wear. My father, with his ruddy cheeks and thinning hair, gives me a small smile as he untwists the coffee percolator with deft hands. We have coffee on the kitchen island together, silently comfortable. The semi-new dishwasher hums. The TV is playing a British drama series I haven't seen. My brother is playing indie music from his room. Our crypt is throwing with life. As I near the bottom of my cup, Mum moves about the kitchen on autopilot. Pots clang about in her search for the right one. The rush of tap water. The tang of freshly sliced lemongrass from the neighbour's garden. I stop by the altar in the living room as I have for every morning for the past three months. Her portrait has a thin film of dust. I use the hem of my shirt to wipe it off. The fruit hasn't gone off yet, but the incense has almost burned out. I pull out three more, lighting the tip with the matches on the table. One, two, three. Bowing three times with the sticks between my joined palms. It was 3.21am when we received the call three months ago. I was wrapped in my doona when I heard mum's mobile shrilling. Head muted, body empty, I woke and heard the house hold its breath. There was a wrongness seeping into the walls. And I felt it reverberate in my bones when I heard my mother howl. There's been an accident. At 11.50am, mum ushers us out of the house. Dinao, dinao. Her bag stuffed with red pockets, our arms filled with warm ceramic dishes with mismatched lids. She's got makeup on, and it's the first time she hasn't worn black. Her body instead wrapped in a sun-bleached red linen dress. She gives me a look at my t-shirt and leggings I choose to ignore. This is the first new year without her. Something lodges itself deep in the pit of my stomach. The jacaranda tree tells me, everything will be okay. We pile into the family Toyota, dad at the wheel, my brother in the back on his phone, airpods in his ears. The metal tongue of the seatbelt burns my fingers. It's 39 degrees, classic January weather. Dad rolls down our windows instead of turning the aircon on. It's a short drive, old habits. I trace the blue flower trim of the dish in my lap, the condensation coating my finger. Dad turns up the radio, our Lionel Richie song takes flight. I watch outside the window, counting the trees along the road. Oh, hi, I'm Jesse. I'm the general manager here at Express Media. I like stock take, spreadsheets and poetry. Like this one from Manira Tabassum Ahmed, Glossary for the Mustard Seed. Manira is an interdisciplinary creative with work published or forthcoming in the Lifted Brow, Australian Poetry Journal, and Runway Journal. Take it away. Glossary for the Mustard Plant. Seed meaning the English word for something I have known much longer. Synonyms. Aperture in this ghost body, limbs archival and eternal, see also root. Antonyms, the beginning, the end, great loves, gravity, resistance. Leaf, meaning the end of summer, space where homeland is forgotten. Synonyms, landscape of grief, hand to earth that feels nothing. Antonyms, skyscraper song. See also root, great loves, the space between borrowed and buried. Flower meaning here, no ballads for women who look like us. Synonyms, glory and glorious, that brown girl self-love. Antonyms, morning and old summer, after resurrection by new rain. 
great loves, love drawn in parallel lines, run on sentences, see also root, root meaning this is not a genesis, rather an inherited wound filled with inherited song. Synonyms, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us, antonyms, the smallness of our motion, great loves, slow repetition, beginning an endless summer. Thank you. I'm Magenta, the creative producer at Express Media. I look after Express Media's programming, which includes toolkits, left to right, and the news conference. I really, really love comics, which is why I'm really excited to pre present Naomi Siegel's Companions. Naomi is an artist, curator, and tentative writer. Um, she's interested in, <laughs> this is a bit, interreliant, vulnerable, and non-masterful forms of making. I hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. Um, my name is Naomi. I'm an artist, writer, arts worker based on Darug and Gunungurra lands, um, more recently known as Wentworth Falls in the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. Uh, I've just been doing some paper making this morning and while that's all out to dry I'm going to quickly do a reading of Companions which is my first published comic and it's in voice works. So I guess like as a preface to talk about what this comic is about, it's basically about the guidance that we can find in both texts and friendships. Um, it was sort of like born out of a really difficult time for me and a difficult time for my friends. And I think around this time I was thinking more about um, you know, as much as society values self-sufficiency and self-mastery, we are actually like all very vulnerable as people and reliant, you know, inter-reliant on all the things that are around us. Um, uh, another important thing about this comic is this idea of citation that Sarah Ahmed talks about, like citation as a way of guiding us to things that can um, help us find our way in our life. Um, and this comic also draws from a lot of video game aesthetics. And I think there are aspects of like RPG adventure games that really appeal to me, like how typically you're in a party of like, you know, three people or whatever, and everyone has these different strengths and weaknesses which is like just how life works but i think that's made extra visible in video games how everyone has these different attributes and like together you balance each other out and you can go on this adventure together and like experience challenges together and finally a really important part of this comic is the land that i'm based on which is the unceded lands of the Darug and Gunungurra peoples not only because like a lot of the frames i drew um like literally drew from the landscape here but like also this is a place where i've been living um you know only for like a year and as a settler and a visitor here like, I acknowledge that this land was never ceded and this is a land that I was able to um, stay on and recuperate and feel normal again. And so I pay my deepest respects to the custodians of this land and I stand in partnership with First Nations people. So, yeah, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and do a reading of Companions. Okay. I've been thinking about our vulnerabilities. The author Julieta Singh writes a lot about her practice of vulnerable reading. It entails a curious wandering through textual genres and disciplines, a practice of opening ourselves up to our dependence on other discourses, peoples, beings, and things that give rise to the ways that we think. There is a myth that individuals should be self-sufficient, that we should individually solve our own weaknesses, that we should not lean on one another. 
But I think living vulnerably makes space for us to coexist with trust, interreliance, and collaboration. Recently, a friend told me that the most important part of an RPG is your companions and the friendships and intimacies formed with them. Text can be companions too. A companion text might give you a sense that in going the way that you are going, you are not alone. Is that Ahmed? Yup. The interreliance of text is fundamentally about the interreliance of people and how both can heal us many times over. Ahmed also suggests that citation is a way of honouring those who helped us find our way when we have deviated from the path we were told to follow. I want to honour all those who have guided me here. And yeah, that's companions. Thank you for listening. Hi, it's me again, this time coming to you from my home office. Um, I just rewatched my speech and I realised there's a few people that I didn't say thank you to, so I'm just going to say thank you to them now. Um, firstly, thank you to our amazing readers, Naomi, Manira and Sophia. Um, I love their pieces so much and it was really amazing to get to hear them read in their own voices. Um, so it was such a privilege. Um, then I also want to thank you for watching uh, and also those of you who subscribe or who just pick up issues occasionally on a whim. If the whim carries you to do so, you can pick up the magazine on our website, expressmedia.org.au slash store, and even subscribe if you want the latest ones in your mailbox as soon as humanly possible. Um, that's all, folks. Last time I tried to recall this, I kissed the magazine. I don't really know how to end this. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>